It is a portable recorder for HD video. Of course, you can record lower resolution video on it too, but it uh, does record HD video. And you can record off HDMI or SDI. SDI is uh, not commonly known in the amateur uh, television or amateur uh, filmmaking world. It's uh, called Serial Digital Interface, and it's really just a serialized stream of uh, uncompressed video. And uh, if we look at the back here, we got several inputs and outputs. We do have our HDMI in to uh, record off, and we have an HDMI out. It serves two purposes. For once, it's a loop through. When you record, you can uh, see your input signal on the output but it can also be used to play back something off this recorder. Then we have the SDI in and SDI out. And uh, this is really nice uh, to use for uh, SDI testing. That's what I've been using it for the last few days. I just uh, put a uh, clip, a test clip, on my um, solid state drive here, plugged it in the box and uh, used it to generate an SDI stream for me. So uh, I'm using it as a pattern generator at the same time. Um, but that's not what it's made for. So this thing does have a power connector, but it is battery powered. As you can see, it's working right now. And uh, one design complaint that you can see right here directly from the start is, okay, how many LEDs are lighting up right now? On camera, this looks a whole lot better than it does in reality. But uh, there's apparently no optical shielding between the LEDs. So this fourth LED uh, in to the human eye, it could be on, could be off, uh, there's no, no telling. And uh, the third LED, is that one on or off? I'm not sure. Actually, I think it's only the first two are on and uh, the last two are off. So that's definitely a design flaw. Then uh, next we have an activity LED that uh, lights up every time uh, the device accesses the solid state drive. Next is a video LED. If you connect a uh, valid video source to it, and I'm trying to find one here, then uh, let's uh, plug one in. Then uh, the moment it gets some uh, valid video, there we go, it'll light up, and uh, that's that. Next is a power button, a uh, display button, then a forward and backwards button, of course. We got the uh, stop button, play button, and record. So recording is very easy. As long as you have a video signal connected to the device and uh, you got a solid state drive inserted, uh, you hit the record button and it starts recording. It's as simple as that. Stop the recording, you hit this button, and to play back a previously recorded clip, you hit play and then you can scroll through the videos with the forward and backward buttons. Very easy. You see uh, that, that was a very short clip. That was the clip that I just recorded to show you. and. Uh, that's that. I'm not sure if you can hear that in the background, but we just have a nice thunderstorm pulling up here. But anyway, as far as uh, those uh, hard drives are concerned, um, you're supposed to use a solid state drive. I've actually uh, tried this with a couple of um, normal hard drives and uh, I'm surprised it actually worked. Now, the format that I was using for that test was um, DNX HD. So I'm pretty sure for the intense write speeds used uh, to write uncompressed video on it, it wouldn't work. This box can record in uncompressed 10-bit color space video. It's very important. Most, I don't want to say most, but many recorders only record 8 bits, and there's a big difference between 8-bit and 10-bit video. Um, it does record uh, ProRes 422. It's an Apple format, and it does record in DNX HD. Um, some people prefer DNX HD, other people prefer Apple ProRes, um, so many people have argued about that. I use DNX HD and uh, I'm going to stick with that, so uh, you may do something different with it. Okay, one thing I'm going to do, like I said, HD SDI isn't, or SDI in general, is not necessarily something that uh, the amateur film or amateur video maker comes along. So I thought why not show what it looks like on the oscilloscope here? Oh, the camera went a little bit down there. Um, this is the Tech 4104B6, obviously. And uh, what we're showing here is an eye diagram of the output. And uh, it, it's really just a, a serial stream. If we single capture that, 
you can see the individual bits coming out and jumping around. HDSDI has a bit rate around 1.5 gigabits per second. There are many, many, many other different link rates. There's a 3G SDI, there's dual link SDI, which uh, simply combines two of these HDSDI streams together. And there's various other formats for uh, standard uh, or uh, lower definitions. So if you've never played with this, uh, this should be interesting to see. And you're going to see many more videos on the blog about HDSDI and, and professional digital video standards. And this is really why I tossed this in also um, for once to show the Blackmagic Design Recorder. And uh, the other side of it is we are going to dive a little bit into uh, professional video applications and uh, look at things like HDSDI and other transmission formats. Okay, this was just supposed to be a little, not even a review, but mini overview of uh, what I bought here. And uh, um, if you have one like this, please share your experience with me. I'd be very much interested in it. Um, one thing I haven't discovered yet is the battery life. Um, I don't think it's going to be very much. As you can see, just in the time we've been talking, it lost another LED here. And again, how many are on, how many are off? It looks like just the first LED is on and the rest is just lighting up because of lack of uh, isolation there. Another thing that I'm missing is I would love to see some sort of indication uh, how full or empty my solid state drive is. There's absolutely no indication of that and uh, it would be nice if like this last LED block here could be used if you could switch it between uh, showing me the battery status and showing me the solid state status this would be really awesome else you just left in the dark of course you can do the math if you know your bit rate but uh, it's not constant bit rate I mean your uncompressed is going to be very clear but the compressed is variable bit rate so you're going to have to assume worst case and then do the math and swap the SSD out after that or just buy a humongous SSD whatever you want okay anyway that's enough of that so uh, I hope you liked it and I'll see you next time